according to the famous German historian Adolf von Harnack. He who know Christianity know all the religions. The one, the person who knows Christianity knows all the religions. Then Max Miller, the famous Orientalist, translator of Upanishad, Buddhist literature, etc. <laughs> On the basis of what Johann Wolfgang von Goethe say about language, Goethe say, if you know only your own language, you don't know foreign language, you don't know nothing of his own. I mean, you don't know nothing about language. If you know only your own language, you don't know nothing about language. And on the basis of that, words, Max Miller say, to know one religion is to know none. In other words, if you know only your religion, you don't know nothing about religion. Here we have a, an interesting point. Because everything depends how you know your religion. If you know one religion, but from a symbolic perspective, then you know all the religions. Because if you know symbolic Jesus, symbolic Lord Chaitanya, you know Moses, Moses Muhammad, Buddha, Lao Tzu, the Alter Rebbe, Rabbi Nachman from Breslau, etc. If you know your religion from a symbolic perspective, you know all the religions. And in that sense, Adolf von Harnack is right. Absolutely right. But, if you know a religion only from a conceptual perspective, the conceptual religion, then if you know only one, you have no idea about religion. In other words, to know religion conceptually is not to know nothing about religion. Because religion is an experience, something alive, cannot be known through the intellect, the reasoning, the thought. And that was exactly the critic of Martin Luther to the theology, the way of teaching, because for Lutero, Christianity was the experience of the cross. It was something totally alive, something that happens to you, not something to be talk or teaching or learning, theorize about it. But religion happens in the heart of Jesus, of Muhammad, or Buddha, of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And that was the reason that inspired so much Martin Heidegger. And we found in his amazing book, Being and Time, in the paragraph 10, Surprise appears Martin Luther. And then 
Heidegger says something like, uh, now we begin to understand Lutero. Because Heidegger have a similar critic to the philosophy. Because he feels that philosophy, in a certain way, first of all, the ontological difference that he brings, that, that, that he criticizes, he accuses all the previous generations until Platon, that they was busy with the ente and forgot about, about the being. So he had this critic, and he found identify with Lutero in the sense that you have these critics towards religion, theorization, too much conceptualization. And in such a way to try to put things like life, the world, the being, in a conceptual box, encapsulate in a box, this, in a, in a conceptual box, this is a life in its to try to theorize about something that it's not possible to make a theory about life. Life is to be living, not to create a philosophy about it, a, theology, a doctrine about it, to explain what is. In order to explain life, you need to be outside of life and to say, oh, this is life, I can talk about it, I can think about it, I can conceptualize it. But you cannot be out of life. It's impossible. The same way with this experience, because religion is to fall in love with life, is to become alive, is to, to be the self. Not to talk about the self, but to be the self. And so Martin Heidegger found this identification with Lutero. And then he began to talk about the Erinus, the event. He began to talk about in his letter about humanism, that he make it as a, in a certain way as a answer to Sartre, he begin to talk that we cannot ask from philosophy what, what cannot give. It's not to blame philosophy, but we cannot ask from philosophy what cannot give. It's like to ask from sex, fame, or money to make you happy. And then you say, no, sex, money, fame is not good. I reject it. But they are not, you cannot ask from sex, money, or fame to make you happy because they are not able to give you happy. In the same way, you cannot ask from philosophy to give you explanation conceptually about what is life, what is the world. That was to the... the, the Critic in a certain way, and the difference with Husserl, and his teacher, his guru, because <coughs> Husserl was more about talk, uh, thinking about the self, thinking about the being, and Heidegger was more like to. You cannot separate the being and in the world sitting to think about the being, because then you ontify the being, and then Heidegger comes with the Dasein, that is the being, but the being ejected to the world, being in the world, deal with the world. Yeah, Husserl told this famous sentence, let's go to the things. But he means, let's know the world, not in the world, but in the consciousness. Because it's the consciousness where we perceive the things. So let's go to the things, but in the consciousness. But Heidegger say, with his Dasein, let's know the things with the things, in the things, by dealing with the things. Something that uh, thousands of years ago, uh, the Buddhism discovered with the tea ceremony, with the martial arts, with the arranged flowers that would deal with the thing, in the dealing with the things, you can discover what they hide. There we go, far away to 
Marion, Michelle Henry, and all this uh, phenomenology that told about discover what the things hide in what the things show, in the sense that discover the potency in the effectiveness of the things. Because the, the primacy of the potency that is previous to the effectiveness. But anyway, I don't want to go so far. Heidegger in his letters to humanism, uh, for humanism, he talk about not to ask from philosophy what philosophy cannot give. And then he say that only he talk about the post-metaphysic, a post-philosophy. He talk about the thought of the future. And the, the thought of the future for him is that to realize, to discover that metaphysic is not enough and we will not able to do really metaphysic until we don't understand, until we don't superate the metaphysical. We will not able to philosophize if we don't transcend philosophy. But it's not a rejection of philosophy because we cannot arrive to it but through philosophy. He talk about the thought of the future that will not be anymore philosophy. Because to know something alive like religion, an experience of the cross of Lutero, the, the, to, to know what religion is, is to access in an immediate way to life without the intervention of the individual consciousness for the West or mind for the Vedantist, without the interference of thought or conceptualization, and that is dhyan, meditation. What is meditation? Observation without the interfer interference of the mind, of the thought. That is observation. Observation is to found a clear in the forest, to perceive the resonance of this being, to be in the pathos of the waiting of Heidegger, to allow the arrangements, the event happens in the passiveness or passivity of Jean-Luc Marion, without reaction, and to allow, as Michel Henry say, life knows himself, life perceives himself. That is meditation. And then we can say, only the one who meditate, only the one who meditation happens to him can know what religion is.